In this demonstration, we'll have a look at how to create new accepted and remote domains. So the first thing we'll start here with is our accepted domains. Now, what an accepted domain is, it allows me to receive email into my organization. Also, what it allows me to do as well is generate my email address policies. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new accepted domain. So we'll do that by clicking on the new button. Then what we'll do is fill out our little table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call it datum.local. Our accepted domain will be a datum.local. And what we're going to have here is we will have it as an internal relay domain. Now, the three options we've got here, we've got authoritative domain being the first one. So this is the option we'll select if the recipients using the domain name have mailboxes in the Exchange Server organization. The one I've just gone for there, I've selected that, the internal relay domain. If my Exchange Server should accept the email but relay to another messaging organization, another Active Directory Trust, and the recipients in our internal relay domain do not have mailboxes in the Exchange organization, but they do have contacts in the global address list. When messages are sent to the contacts, the transport service will forward them to another SMTP server, and Exchange Server will not generate any NDRs for recipients for which it is not responsible because it's not authoritative for this internal relay domain. And then the last option we've got is external relay domain, and we'll select this if our Exchange Server should accept the mail but relay it to an alternate SMTP server. In this scenario, the transport service receives the messages for the recipients in the external relay domain, then routes the messages to the email system for the external relay domain, and it requires a send connector for the transport server to the external relay domain. So now we've typed all of that in, let's just click our save button. And what that will have done is that has now created our new accepted domain. And as we can see now, we do have it as datum.local. Now what we can also do as well is we can also create our send connectors. We've also got the ability as well to configure what we call uh, remote domains. And with remote domains, what we're doing is we're specifying where we can send mail to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go across to my exchange management shell. And what we'll then do is we'll set up our new remote domain, which will be for contoso.com. So what we'll then do is specify a connector to send the mail to contoso.com. So now in Exchange Management Shell, let's just get a list of the remote domains. And the only one I should have is I should have star, and star will cover all domains. So what we're seeing here is our Exchange organization, when we send an email, can send to everyone. So we'll just issue the command to get the list. Now what we'll do here is we'll just hit Enter. And what we can see is we've done the get hyphen remote domain, default, got star. So what we're seeing here is we're allowed to send to everyone. Right, so let's just there uh, clear that off. And let's just create a new remote domain for contoso.com. So what we've done here is we've done new hyphen remote domain, hyphen domain name contoso.com, and we're specifying that name as contoso. And we can see that we do have contoso, contoso.com, and that's all configured. Let's just set up um, some more settings on contoso.com. So uh, as a secure default, Exchange doesn't allow sending automatic forwards, replies in old style out of office messages to the internet. And the security in this is that there can't be created any mail loops and that Exchange doesn't reply to any spam messages which might lead to spam attacks. So what I want to do here is I want to ensure that I do have auto forward enabled set to false and delivery report enabled to false as well for the contoso domain. So let's just issue the commands that will ensure that those are turned off. So we're going to do a set hyphen remote domain, contoso, auto forward enabled, definitely false, delivery report enabled, also false. So hit enter at this point here. So we've now set that. We just want to verify that everything has been set correctly. So what we'll do here is we'll just uh, get some information relating to our remote domain. So we'll issue our get hyphen remote domain, hyphen identity contoso, and we'll pipe that and we'll format the list. And if we have a look here, so auto reply enabled is still true, auto forward enabled is false, delivery port enabled is also false. So ideally, I think I should want to turn off the allowed out of office types to maybe, yeah, I'll leave that as external. Maybe auto reply enabled, I may set to false, and the same with the non delivery port enabled false as well. Haven't yet decided, but I can change them through the PowerShell commandlets. That's the end of this demonstration of having a look at accepted domains and remote domains. Thank you.